ಪ್ರೀತಿಯ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳೇ ಇವತ್ತು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪಿ ಯು ಸಿ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟರ್ಮೋಡೈನಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಇರೋವಂಥ ವಿಷಯಗಳನ್ನು ತಿಳ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಇವತ್ತು ಆ್ಯಸ್ ದ ಈಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಪ್ಲೈ ಟು ದ ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ವೈಬ್ರೇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ರ್ಯಾಂಡಮ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕುಲೇಟ್ ದ ಆವರೇಜ್ ವೆಲಾಸಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಝೀರೋ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಸೇ ಒನ್ ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಡೆಫಿನೆಟ್ಲಿ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಮೂವ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಅಪೋಸಿಟ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಆವರೇಜ್ ದೇರ್ ದಟ್ ವೆಲಾಸಿಟಿ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಝೀರೋ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಮೆಜರ್ ದ ವೆಲಾಸಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಆರ್ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ನಾಟ್ ದ ಆವರೇಜ್ ಅರ್ಥಮೆಟಿಕ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಸೊ ದ ಆರ್ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಸ್ಪೀಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಬೈ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ರೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಮಾ ಆರ್ ಟಿ ಬೈ ಎಂ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳೇ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗಾಮಾ ಗಾಮಾ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಕಾಲ್ ದ ರೇಷಿಯೋ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫಿಕೇಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಿ ಪಿ ಬೈ ಸಿ ವಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ಈಸ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಲ್ ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಟಿ ಈಸ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ಎಂ ಈಸ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ವೇಟ್ ಸೊ ಬೈ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಫೈಂಡ್ ದ ಆರ್ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಔ ದ ಸ್ಪೀಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ಆರ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಕ್ವೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಸ್ಪೀಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಪೋರ್ಷನಲ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ರೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ಆಸ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೀಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ಅದರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಗೆಟ್ ದ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ವೇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ವರ್ಸ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಪೋರ್ಷನಲ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ರೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಮಾಸ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ವೇಟ್ ಸೊ ಆಸ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ವೇಟ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸಸ್ its rms value decreases now as you supply the energy to the gas molecules in how many modes those energies are going to be stored the different modes where the energy is going to stored in the system is given by a parameter called the degrees of freedom so degrees of freedom represents the number of independent variables or number of independent modes in which a system can possess the energy so it can possess either in translational energy or in vibrational or in rotational so the degrees of freedom has three modes of energy that is translational mode vibrational mode and rotational mode if i calculate what is the degrees of freedom for monatomic for diatomic and for triatomic so if i consider the monatomic gas molecules in how many modes that energy is going to be stored in the system it is going to stored in three modes all the three are translational in the case of monatomic so students please remember what is the degrees of freedom for monatomic it is 3 similarly if i come to know what is the degrees of freedom for diatomic gas it is 5 and for triatomic gas n equals to 6 but condition is there in the case of triatomic all the three molecules should possess in non linear form if the three molecules are in the linear form then the degrees of freedom is 7 so the degrees of freedom is 6 for triatomic if the molecules are in the non linear form if it is in the linear form the degrees of freedom is 7 as we have discussed the degrees of freedom for monatomic diatomic and triatomic from this degrees of freedom you can calculate what is the value of the gamma which is the ratio of the specificate what is the relation between the degrees of freedom and the ratio of specificate that is gamma is equal to 1 plus 2 by n where gamma is the ratio of specificate n is the degrees of freedom so if you know the degrees of freedom you can calculate the ratio of specificate so for diatomic degrees of freedom is 3 so if i calculate the gamma it is given by 1 plus 2 by 3 from that you can calculate what is the values of gamma for monatomic and for diatomic and for 
triatomic gas molecules. Dear students, let us take the next concept loss of thermal conductivity. Now, let me consider a slab of length L maintained at the two different temperatures theta 1 and theta 2. The area of cross section of this slab is A. Whenever the amount of heat supplied from this end to that end, the law of thermal conductivity states the amount of flowing through this slab is directly proportional to the area of the slab directly proportional to the temperature difference of this opposite faces, inversely proportional to the length of this slab and directly proportional to the time taken for the flow of it from this end to that end. In mathematical representation, Q is proportional to area, temperature difference theta 1 minus theta 2, directly proportional to the time taken and inversely proportional to the length that is q is proportional to a theta 1 minus theta 2 t divided by l to remove this proportionality constant we are introducing a constant called coefficient of thermal conductivity denoted by the letter k so the law of thermal conductivity gives the relation between the amount of heat energy flowing in the slab and the temperature difference, area and the length of the slab that is Q equals to K A theta 1 minus theta 2 into T divided by L. Dear students, in the case of a slab also there will be an opposition for the flow of it which is considered as the thermal resistance which is given by L divided by K into A which is the thermal resistance of the slab. Students, let me take up the next concept of Newton's law of cooling. As we know that if I place a body of higher temperature, when it is placed in the surrounding of lower temperature, definitely there will be a loss of heat from the higher temperature to the surrounding. Amount of heat lost by the body is directly proportional to how much of rate of it is going to lost by the body is directly proportional to the temperature difference between the body and the surrounding. Suppose if I considered a body having a temperature theta, it is placed in the surrounding of temperature theta naught. Let us say dQ is the amount of it lost by the body in a time of dt seconds. Then as per the Newton's law of cooling, dq by dt is directly proportional to theta minus theta naught. Students, let us take up the next concept that is the first law of thermodynamics. What exactly this first law of thermodynamics tells? It states that the amount of energy supplied to the system is utilized for the two purposes. A part of heat energy is utilized for an internal energy, the rest of the energy is going to be utilized for the external work done. So in mathematical representation, if I say delta Q is the amount of energy supplied to the system, delta U is the internal energy and delta W is the amount of work done, then mathematically it is given by delta Q equals to delta U plus delta W. So whatever the energy we are giving to the system, it utilized as internal energy and work done. So obviously it proves the conservation of energy. And if you go to the application of this, number one, if you apply the first law of thermodynamics to the isothermal process, what happens? As we know that in the isothermal process, we are maintaining the constant temperature, the internal energy becomes zero. 
So, under the isothermal process, the amount of energy supplied to the system is utilized only to do the external work done, their internal energy is 0. So, if I calculate what is the amount of work done under the isothermal process, you can note down the formula for that students, that work done in the isothermal process is given by W equals to mu R T log of initial pressure divided by final pressure with base E. R is universal gas constant, T is the temperature, mu is the number of moles. In the another process that is in adiabatic process, no doubt, in the adiabatic process we are not allowing to flow the heat energy from one point to another point that from system to surrounding or from surrounding to the system. So, in adiabatic process the amount of heat energy is 0. So, if I apply the same thing in the first law of thermodynamics delta Q is 0. So, for adiabatic process if I say what is the first law of thermodynamics put delta Q is 0 then delta U plus delta W should be 0 or I can say delta U should be equal to minus of delta W. Similarly, if you calculate what is the work done in the adiabatic process, the amount of work done in the adiabatic process is given by mu r into initial temperature minus final temperature divided by gamma minus 1. As we know what is gamma? That is ratio of specificate Cp by Cv. And in adiabatic process, what is the equation of the state? Because in adiabatic process, we are not keeping any parameter as a constant, only we are saying that the delta Q is 0. So, in the adiabatic process, if you discuss what is the equations of the states that is given by, please note down the students that equations are PV gamma is equal to a constant in terms of temperature and volume that is TV gamma minus 1 is a constant and T power gamma into P power 1 minus gamma is a constant. So, this is the relation between the pressure, volume and temperature for the adiabatic process. Dear students, let us take up the last concept that is heat engine. It is a device used to convert the heat energy into work. So, as in the case of heat engine, we know that it consists of the three parts that is source, sink and the working substance. In order to know the efficiency of that engine, that is given by work done divided by the heat input. Suppose if I say, Q1 is the amount of heat absorbed from the source and Q2 is the amount of heat rejected to the sink. Then what is the work done? That is the loss of heat that is Q1 minus Q2. So, if Q1 is the amount of heat absorbed from the source and Q2 is the amount of heat rejected to the sink, then the work is given by Q1 minus Q2. So, as per the definition of the efficiency of the engine, amount of work done to the amount of heat absorbed or heat input. Work done is Q1 minus Q2, amount of heat input is Q1. So, efficiency is given by Q1 minus Q2 divided by Q1 which is equal to 1 minus Q2 by Q1. And also we know that the source is maintained at the higher temperature theta 1 or you can say T1 and the sink is maintained at the lower temperature T2. Then we can prove that Q2 by Q1 is equal to T2 by T1. So, the efficiency of an engine is also given in terms of temperature that is 1 minus T2 by T1 where T2 is the temperature of the sink, T1 is the temperature of the source. And also make a note, the efficiency of the engine is not going to be 100 percent. It may be a Carnot engine or it may be any engine, efficiency of the engine cannot be a 100 percent. Students, 
Now let me analyze some few questions on it and thermodynamics. Yes, the first question is like this. A uniform metal rod is used as a bar pendulum if the room temperature rises by 10 degrees Celsius and the coefficient of linear expansion of the metal of the rod is 2 into 10 raised to minus 4 per degree Celsius. The period of the pendulum will have percentage increase of the options are like this students option A minus 2 into 10 raised to minus 3, option B minus 1 into 10 raised to minus 3, option C 2 into 10 raised to minus 3 and option D is 1 into 10 raised to minus 3. Students at room temperature the time period of the pendulum is given by T equals to 2 pi into square root of L by G. In the problem clearly they are telling that some amount of heat is supplied to the metal rod so that the room temperature is increased by 10 degrees Celsius. As we know that as the amount of heat is supplied to the metal rod there is an increase in the length. Because of the change in the length the correspondingly the time period is going to change because we know that the time period is directly proportional to the square root of length. So definitely there is a change in time period. Since t is proportional to root L, the fractional change in the period is delta t by t by t is equal to t is proportional to root L. So the change in the period is delta t by t is equal to half times of delta L by L. But students in the problem that given the coefficient of linear expansion. So definitely our intention has to be convert from delta L by L to in terms of alpha. As we know that change in length to the original length is given by alpha into delta theta where delta theta is the increase in temperature therefore delta T by T equals to 1 by 2 into delta L by L can be taken as alpha into delta theta which is equal to half into alpha that given as 2 into 10 raised to minus 4 and increase in temperature that given as 10 degree Celsius. So 2 and 2 get cancelled 10 raised to minus 4 into 10 is nothing but 10 power minus 3. So our option A is option D is the correct answer 1 into 10 raised to minus 3.